What did it take to carve the memorial? Money? Dynamite? Tools? Workers? All of these things were necessary. But beyond that, it took something more. Such an endeavor required perseverance, dedication, trial and error, a visionary, and perhaps even a dose of good luck as well. The vision for Mount Rushmore went through many iterations before the mountain became the masterpiece visitors see today. The first proposed idea included a different location, different figures, and a different sculptor. State historian Doan Robinson first conceived of the idea to carve gigantic figures in an area of the Black Hills known as the Needles. He envisioned important figures of the West, such as Buffalo Bill, Red Cloud, Lewis and Clark, and Sacagawea. He originally contacted artist Laredo Taft, but Taft was too ill to travel to South Dakota. Later, Robinson wrote to Gutsum Borglum, who replied with great interest, and so a sculptor was found. Borglum brought with him his own ideas. He had no desire to carve heroes of the West. Instead, he imagined great visionaries of national importance. An early sketch consisted of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln carved in granite. In September 1924, Borglum and his scouting party set out to explore the proposed area. However, upon seeing the needles, he concluded that the granite was ill-suited for carving, being poorly proportioned and too weathered. Undeterred, he returned on another scouting expedition the following year. On August 17, 1925, Borglum, his son, and six others first ascended the side of Mount Rushmore. They did so in a pyramid fashion. Borglum reflected in his journal. The trip was wonderful, full every moment of the most dramatic of scenery and hazard to horse and rider. The shoulder of Rushmore is far and away the best that I have seen. And so he set out to carve a memorial to the country he loved. But the road from inception to completion was fraught with challenges. One of the problems that persisted throughout the carving period was the lack of money. Borglum originally believed that carving would cost about 400000 and take four years to complete. History, of course, reveals the reality as it cost nearly a million dollars and 14 years of hard work before the project ended in 1941. As luck would have it, President Calvin Coolidge vacationed in the Black Hills in the summer of 1927. Coolidge took an interest in the Mount Rushmore project and agreed to dedicate the mountain in August of that year. His endorsement helped Borglum to raise critical funds. In all, private businesses and individuals donated $153,992.32, while the remaining $836,000 came from federal funding. Aside from financial difficulty, there were the challenges of physical carving. There were no pre-established guidelines for carving on such a large scale. Fortunately, Borglum's previous work at Stone Mountain, although it ended in hostility and his dismissal from the project, taught him important lessons that were critical to the success of Mount Rushmore. And then there was the challenge of the mountain, a force as unmovable and unflappable as Borglum himself. Borglum was forced to alter his scale model nine times during the carving to adjust for conditions of the rock. The largest change was the entire repositioning of Jefferson. Finances, carving logistics, and the mountain were just a few of the hurdles Borglum and other key figures had to overcome. Had they known all the challenges that lie ahead, would they have even started? We will never know, but because of their dedication and perseverance, they turned an idea into reality. Without their efforts, Mount Rushmore would not be the iconic memorial it is today. Borglum, a man of vision and ambition, was never one to shy away from controversy or challenge. He once wrote, Life is a kind of campaign. People have no idea what strength comes to one's soul and spirit through a good fight. <laughs>